So, you know, you talk about these, these, the three uh, facets of our, of us, which are the, um, the physical, the spiritual, and the soul. The mental, and the soul yeah. is the, the mental. Mm -hmm. And if I, if I was mistaken, I heard you say once that that's the, that's the realm, that's the plane in which we, if we have any ability of escaping the shit show that we're in. I don't think so. I, I think, I, you know, I've never been in that frame of thought. I do know that it's farther out, but I do believe it's beyond. Okay. So we're, we're right now we're we're stuck within our three body system. Right. Now, when somebody projects in the astral, they think, Oh, I finally got out. I'm free. No, you didn't. You went from the prison to the prison yard. Okay. And the mental plane means, okay. So when your astral body uh, disconnects from your physical body, it's got a cord between there. And then in between your uh, spirit body or your astral body and your soul, there's another thin cord that they connect. So what we're doing is we're in prison with those, those three bodies, no matter which one we reside in. It's just that we're, the other two aren't on physical earth, but it's still you're still confined to them. Now, I do believe, my personal belief is, if we are going to be free, then I believe the only way is to be free of all th three of them, and it's just our consciousness. And our consciousness has some mass, but it's it's the same mass as the ether. You know, I mean, we have to be free of all three of them in order to be really free, in order to be out of the system. That's my belief, because that's the only... That is the only constant in our system. If we go from the, we're in the physical, we obviously are trapped here. We're in the astral, we can only go so far there. And we go on the mental, we can, in the soul, we can only go so far there. But what we have in, in, uh, in, in common with all of them is we're moving our consciousness, which is the us of us. So I do believe our consciousness is the only part of us that we could take with us. We don't want anything else. I don't want anything that's going to be trapping me within that three three body range or within the astral or within the mental plane. We need to be outside of all of them because they're all controlled places. So, um, which I agree with you on that. It seems to me that we're in this trinity, if you will. Isn't it interesting? We're talking this triad, this trinity, this thing, this this we're trapped in and we have to somehow, you know, Mark from forever conscious consciousness research. Is that what it is? Or conscious research, something like that. Anyways, you said you didn't know about him, but he talks about it along with others that the whole idea is just to acquire uh, our own personal autonomy, our own sovereignty, it's the ability, and I think you bring it up too, is this ability of some of the strategies. One of the very first things is to be able to say no. No to all these constructs. To say, I'm not going to be part of it. I mean, tell me if I'm going the wrong way, wrong direction. But it's this whole idea of saying, you know what? Screw your religion. Screw your politics. Screw all your systems that are out there to ensnare us in the physical. And once we're able to do that here, then somehow we can, that translates into the astral plane. And then into the um, next level, right? If, in other words, we have to become our own true essence or true self, which means that we are. Tr it's it's a it's shedding away, if you will. It's abandoning all these constructs that other people, other entities have given us, whether in the physical or in the spiritual. Does that make sense? You agree yeah, with that? And I go through it. In the spiritual manifesto, I try to lay everything out about disconnecting from what I call the game. And the game is basically the all the drama of physical life because they get you in the game, you're enthralled in it, and it's like a spell or a drug. Everybody has to have their news. Everybody has to know what's going on. And, you know, I don't mean to take anything away from anybody. I just mean to get down to the truth. Now, oh, when I first what came out... What about this? How about this? So you, we, uh, this is how I see it. And we come in and out, right? And we have to know the reality of this situation and the horror show that it actually is 
um, in order to then let go of it. The, the no. illusion, if that makes sense. Yeah. The, only way, the only way that you're going to get get rid of the illusion is, and and I've been been working on this for some time. Now, my intention with this is not to just tell everybody what what this, what our situation is. That's not my intention. My intention is to lay things out. But my intention is my my end game. My goal is to find the way out. To to map the way out. I started it with this uh, spiritualist manifesto by how to prepare yourself. And I've got another book working right now. And I keep my books very short. It's short to the point. It gives you a little bit of a background, enough for you to understand what's going on and then what to do. And um, but what about the solid about the realizing the real the show that we're in, right? The illusion that we're in. I call it the giant shit show, and that it's all big giant deception, and it's it's not something to fall in love with. with. It's the it's the the ability to let go of it. You know, does that make sense to say, you well, know yeah. what? We're gonna. We're I don't gonna... need. I don't need this. I don't need this place. I don't need this reality. I don't need the television. I don't need all the crap that's on the internet. I don't need the the crap that's going on with my neighbors. What I need is to find myself. Well, it's Embrace. about it's about understanding that. Yeah, everything that's going on, we can say, yeah, we know. But understanding and realizing and just knowing are two different things. So what we're doing is we're on a level and it's 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 very difficult to even understand from my viewpoint, because what happens is, let me put it this way, we're multiple levels of deception and manipulation. OK, so on the on the groundwork level, you got you know stuff at work, you got stuff with your family, you got the other things that happen in your life. So you're dealing with all that. So you're juggling your life and all the roadblocks that happen here. Above that are in the astral, in the spirit world, you're being manipulated, being deceived. In your dream state, you are you are being programmed not only on the earth, you're being programmed in the astral without even knowing it. It's constant, it's a constant stream. And let me give you an example. People will get learn something or they'll say, "Yeah, I really need to I need to practice that because then that way I can kind of help separate myself. Well, you will begin to forget. It will be pruned from your memory. It will be pruned from your life because what happens is the system and the way it's built and the way you are being constantly programmed on a physical and a psychological level will prune these from your memory and from your life. And it happens all the time. And I've seen it in person, I've seen it happen. What's what's what is going on is a psycho illogical psyops is happening to us on a 24 seven basis. And the, the farther and the harder you work to get to the bottom of it, the harder it works against you. So people that experience astral projection and that sort of thing that are are looking for ways out of the system are going to meet more insulated roadblocks and that sort of thing so as you begin to separate yourself you begin to get more insulated from your source and from what you're looking for so as the as you get deeper into the game the game gets more difficult and you really don't understand the levels of difficulty until you experience them because then you begin to get frustrated then you begin to get you know you question yourself and that's the whole purpose behind it. The ones that are creating this whole manipulation are centuries, are eons beyond our conception. Now, not on a spiritual level, it's not beyond our conception, but we have been dumbed down and pre-programmed for all these years that we're trying to get ourselves up out of the hole and as we climb a couple feet then it becomes slipperier or it becomes or there's you know something that goes against you so it's it's such an uh an involved system that it's really hard just to understand and get a grasp of how it is and even when you do you begin to lose sight of it only because of the of the 
friction that's gone against you. You don't even see it coming. I mean, let me give you this example. You'll go into a dream. Mm -hmm. Say there's someone you hate in life, somebody you just can't stand. In that dream, they'll come to your house and you'll be like, I really don't like this person, but you won't say anything or you won't do anything about it. And then when you wake up, you'll be like, wow, how come I didn't do anything about it? Because you're being manipulated. Because they're showing you that they can even bring the person that you hate the most in life and put them right in front of you in your own house and you're not going to do a damn thing about it. Because that's <laughs> deceit. That's manipulation. And what it is, is it's like them saying, just, just try. You think that you're getting somewhere? Look at what we can do, and you don't do a damn thing about it. You sure you're not talking about my ex now? <laughs> <laughs> She's probably feeling the same way about me. You know, the, but yeah, and it's true. We don't just seem example, we, we, yeah. we don't see we don't seem to have the capacity to do much much about anything of, of what's going on around us. We can't even seem to organize about anything. Uh, at a social level, um, just unless, I, I really, unless, unless it's, and I'm going to say something, this is what I say, unless it's pure evil, if it's pure evil, then somehow humanity can organize itself to do that horrendous things against each other, against this creation, against everything. And that's a reality that we can't just obviously just ignore that that's not what's happening. You know what I mean? I admire, I admire the other side because their ability to fulfill a plan, they go, they, they, they plan and they execute. And then everybody works together, which on our side, nobody works together. You can, it's hard enough if you, even with something that happened within the last year, anything happens, even if it's a big event, you're, you maybe get, okay, so a big event and I live in Phoenix and we maybe get 2000 people show up at, at the first day. After the first day, you maybe get half the next day. And then after that, within a week, you're down to five people. I mean, people just will not, they don't stand up for themselves. They don't stand up for their freedoms. And they're sure in the hell not going to stand up for the freedoms of the generations that come behind us. I mean, we're responsible for the generations behind us. The people that were before us, the generations before us paved the way for us. Not, I mean, they might not have been aware of everything that's going on, but still they paved the way for us. So if you're not going to stand up for just yourself, stand up for others, because there's not a reason why you would want others down the line to suffer uh, by losing all their freedoms just because you just didn't want to get off your chair or make use of the information that you have available to you. So when I'm, you know, close my eyes and it's like, and I'm just trying to, to try to find a, a, a a silent space of some peace. Sure enough, there's all these freaking entities are there. And if they're not there, then there's going to be this lattice, this thing, this like a grid, this thing that's going to be there. It's always something interfering with light and everything. And it's just like you get to the point, you're just like, this is such a fucking, I'm pissed. That's what I am. I'm well, pissed at whatever, energy. I'm pissed at what whatever brought, all of us to this shit show that we call the world, Earth, they should be held accountable for what they've done to us. Well, yeah. I, it, well, the only way we're, anybody's going to hold anybody accountable, and like I've told a lot of people, I said, don't rely on some alien entities coming and saving us. because no, there's, 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 no there's no justice in this no, realm, and there's no justice we in don't, the astral If plane, we don't do it for ourselves... It's, we're never going to get out of here. So if you, if you get aggravated, aggravated, if you get aggravated, convert that energy into into a positive way and move on with it. Because I've seen enough in many years to understand there's a lot out there. And what I want to say about a lot of these entities that appear and don't appear or we can't see, I believe they're there all the time. They're, they're on a different level, but we just can't see them because our eyesight is so limited in the visual spectrum. I think we see less than 0.5% of what actually is out there. So we don't, we, we miss more than we see. 0.05% is what it is or something like that. It's yeah, really, yeah. It's, it's, so, it's so minimal ridiculous. that we miss more than what we see. Which is part of 
the soul trap matrix that we were living in, right? Yeah. We're put into, or we're hijacked, thrown into this meat suit. And, and, and people will say, oh, how wonderful the human body is. The human body is like the worst design that was ever made in this creation. It's got, we have 5,000 freaking gen genetically flaws just alone. Not to mention the fact, you know, all the other uh, ridiculous things, whatever designed us, because we don't fit in. And I don't care you know, people say, oh, it's evolution, all the evolution. I mean, I can see in the lower life forms, quote unquote, lower life forms. But when it comes to the meat suit that we're housed in, it's a fucking mistake. It's a well, disaster. They, they, it's a disaster. It wasn't, it wasn't designed to be to be perfect. It was designed to be flawed, so that we have to live within the confines of what we have. And and if there's a bad, there's if we get far enough, that we'll probably just get somehow that we can get affected through different ways. And then you know, I mean, look through all the people that are so sick now. It's you know it. Things happen for a reason, and I don't believe in the karma bullshit for five minutes. Uh, the karma thing is a total it, lie. It, 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 if, if karma was legit, bro, if it's it was a great legit, story. how's come the worst of the worst are always constantly being re rewarded in this right in this right. realm? The There's no karma, right? The whole metaphysical field for years has been infiltrated. All this BS stuff that's been put in us, telling us we're all one, all that stuff. It, no, we're all individuals, and that's why we we act as individuals. We are not part of a hive mind. And when I say, so we're also know, suffering from this from forced amnesia. You know, right. if, if if it is reincarnation, which seems like it's possibly, we don't remember anything from previous lives. We not, therefore we're not learning anything. People right. say, how would you learn? learn? Right? How would you forget. learn? If can't remember and how many times you need to die to learn to die and how many times you need to go to war how many times you need to fight with somebody how many times right. it's all it's all smoke and mirrors it's a it dog and pony circus <laughs> so and we got a brain it looks like the brain with two hemispheres and it's like a giant reduction valve that keeps us from remembering anything thinking clearly um uh, you know, just really being able to really navigate this place properly, communicating properly. We we can't seem to communicate. I'm sure just you're hearing things. I'm hearing things. We're not hearing each other clearly. It's not a, it's not your fault. It's not my fault. It's the design. We can't even hear ourselves, each other, and fully and clearly of what's being said. I mean, it, the ears aren't right. The the the, the Everything's wrong. It's just, it's, I think that the important thing is, to me at least, to come to that realization and say, you know what, this is just a giant shit show. So then it the, goes back to the question and the most important question, all this. And people think it's really selfish and all that, but it's not. Because if we and I, or if somebody could figure out how to escape this shit show and we could share it with other people, their actual answer. That might be the most important question and answer that humanity, excuse me, humanity could ever receive. So how do we get out of this shit show? Well, how do we escape it? Well, the first the first thing I tell everybody, obviously, is disconnecting yourself from the game. That's the first thing. That's the very first thing. And then you have to understand what's what that it's a multi-level game. Now, what what I tell people is very important. Now, don't ever ever misunderstand when i say we're a conscious it that does not include the subconscious the subconsciousness is a completely different field and the subconsciousness is actually part of the hive mind the consciousness is only us the subconsciousness is part of the hive mind so what we need to understand is we're just that one part but the subconsciousness is the overseer of all of us, and it has to do with control of our of our dream state and our, and state times when we're not really paying attention. So there's a lot of things that is integrated into us besides our physicality, our psychological, our emotional. Everything is intertwined into this system. So when we begin to get control, 
We're constantly fighting everything on every level because it's all going against us. So, like I said, getting out of the game and becoming conscious no matter where you are, whether you are awake or whether you are asleep and being in control, whether you got to live every night in a lucid dream, in a conscious dream, that's what we should be doing. Because at that point, we have gained control of our nighttime. So our consciousness needs to access our spirit body at night, and we need to be in control of what's happening. And once we can control ourselves and everything during the day, we need to be able to do that at night as well. Because what happens is, if we can be so easily miss uh, or deceived, deceived while we're in dream state, then we still haven't achieved what we need to do. Because if they can fool us in a dream, they can easily put us into that state at any time and just walk all over us. So learning how to say no or remembering to say no, that's never going to work because the deceit is far deeper than we could ever imagine. And that's why we need to constantly be aware. And the only way you can do that is through practice. So, so basically, but it seems to me that part of this is the constant rehearsal of dealing with that which fears that we are, are afraid of. Well, you can't if be afraid of anything because what happens well, is your, your emotions, okay, you can't let your feelings and your emotions dictate your life. Once you understand that your emotions and, and one thing you can look at is people say, well, that person made me do it. That person triggered me. That person. If you allow other people to determine your feelings and emotions, then they are controlling you. You don't well, want feelings anybody. and emotions are a part of the deception. That's part of the problem. Right. But but you can control your own thoughts. You can control your own emotions, and you can control your own feelings. So if somebody walks up to you and says something, like you're an asshole, whatever, and and you get all offended by it. You just allowed them to trigger you. You allowed them to be in control of your emotions. You have to be in complete control of your emotions and your feelings at all time. So when you are um, either in the sleep state or in the waking state, you need to be 100% in control of yourself. Now, sometimes you might get a little upset or, or irritated or whatever, but you need to be in control of that because if other things and outside sources are controlling your thoughts and feelings and emotions, then you are not in control. You have to be in control of everything. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is to take control of yourself. And you have to consciously be aware of what you're thinking and what you're feeling all the time in order for that to happen. So, so there's this innate programming within us that has this yearning des desire to have personal sovereignty the control of our, our of who we are, right? Uh, of, to know who we are, to um, to uh, manipulate what's around us, and to say, you know, listen, um, uh, this is not what I want. This is I want what I want, not what you want me to want. That kind of thing. So, so this whole thing about personal sovereignty that you, you see how politics hijacked it, religion is hijacked it, the new age is hijacked it, um, war is hijacked it, um, this whole, th you can see this whole thing, of, you know, it's like, I'm not saying it's not a good idea that to be, say, a prepper and off the grid and all that kind of stuff, but that ain't the fucking answer. It's you just can't a run from this. This this will, you can't run from it. You have to face it at some point. You know, you can, you can keep moving and keep moving. Eventually, you're going to run out of space. Eventually, so somehow, it's going to catch up with you. So it talks about in the scriptures to be like a child and also it says to be still and to know that I am or God or whatever. What does that mean to you? Because apparently okay, so I, I do believe, I do believe it, it, we have a source. We do have a source. I can't say whether it's a God. I don't know. I don't know what we do have a source at some point. But if you're looking for a hero and if you're looking for a God, you better look in the mirror. Because you are, and we are the only people that are going to say. Not Donald Trump? What do you mean? 
<laughs> sure that Donald Trump. You, you have to be your own hero. You have to be your own God. And you have to be your own savior. Because there is no one, not even your best friend, is going to stand up for you most likely when things get, when it goes down, when it comes down to it. Your spouse. People need to rely on themselves. Your spouse might have that. Your spouse can't even be there for you for this for this quest. Well, the problem is, is if your spouse doesn't get control of themselves and get out of the game and they choose to do their own thing, then you're going to have to, you're going to have to act for them as well. You know what I mean? You're going to have to act in their benefit. And at some point they decide they don't want to do what you're going to do. That's fine. But you're going to give them the option. You're going to make it available for them. That's my whole thing. Not everybody's going to think like I do and I understand it. You can't control them, nor can you. No. You know, or do you have a right to determine their destiny? So exactly. It's... Exactly. So what I'm doing is I'm making the information available to anybody who wants to utilize it and work on it and, and make it better. That's, that's great. But I understand there's going to be people that choose not to think about it this way. Say if a, an alien race did come down to earth and they said, we're going to save you guys. And, you know, so they take over and they do all this stuff. And then 85% of the population says, Oh, we liked it better the way it was. You guys are just, you guys are a bunch of jerks and we don't want to follow you and all this kind of stuff. So if people don't come in in line, then you can save them and they wouldn't even know it. They think you're screwing them over. So, you know, I mean, you have to do things on, on an individual basis. Everybody has to stand up for themselves and, and, and work for themselves. And if, you know, if obviously if you work with other people, that works fine, but don't depend on anybody else. If you want to depend on somebody, depend on your dog or your cat. They're, they're not going to, they're not going to go against you. So, so, so what, by you saying that, that means uh, don't count on me, Michael H. Adams, and don't count on Michael L. Martin. We don't have the answer for it. Is that what you're saying? Well, no, what I'm saying is to follow through with, disconnecting yourself and being in control. You do that for yourself. You can't do it for your wife. You can't do it for your son. You can't do it for your daughter. You can't do it for your mom. You can't do it for your grandma. You have to prepare yourself and make the information available to whoever wants to do that. But if when the time comes and you've prepared yourself and other people haven't, and you try to show them or, or prepare them and they don't want to accept it, then you have to do what you have to do. What I'm saying is disconnecting yourself from the system. So it's 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 not a one it's not a one step process. It's a whole entire process. It's a process of disconnecting yourself to the point of your consciousness, understanding and being aware of what everything is happening to you, whether you're asleep or whether you're awake. So you know if somebody pulls the wool over your eyes and we're all manipulated to the point where everybody's in a fog, you will still be conscious enough to make decisions based upon because you have prepared yourself. The only way we're going to prepare ourselves to the psycho-illogical process is to become psychologically in control, mentally we have to be in control of ourselves. That's the only way we're going to get out of this. It's not a battle. It's a war, but it's a psychological war. Because if you can't remain conscious, no matter what is presented to you, then you are going to fall right back into the trap and you'll be recycled forever. What it is, when we get to a point whether I don't know if it's after death or what, but we get to a certain point, we can choose for ourselves what we decide to do. And at that point, no illusion is going to be able to pull the wool over our eyes because we have become psychologically prepared for whatever happens. So part of this illusion with them would be like, People waiting for Jesus or Allah or Yahweh well, it's not that, or Moses or okay. Say when you die. I don't even know if this is true. I just I'm just making this scenario up. Say when you die, it's like a dream state, okay? <laughs> and you're you're uh, you've got a lot of activity going on. And say you you're at, you're in like a dream state to where everything they could potentially mention to you, you'd say, oh yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, I'm all with that. Yeah, I'll do that. No problem. 
You know, when in reality, if you were conscious, you'd say, I'm not doing that. There's no way I'm going to go along with that. The only way what's happening, I know what's happening. We get to that certain state and they said, yeah, we looked at it. We, we really need you to do this. And you, you're really going to, and you're going to, like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I totally agree. Yeah, I agree. Even though we know better, we're in that state of illusion and we go along with it. Like, uh, you know, like we allow the politicians to make decisions for us, even though when oh, we presidential that, election is a perfect example of it. Right. So here we are. We're acquiescing our, all of our control to these beings, and we're just throwing ourselves back into the recycling bin. So the only way that we're going to be able to put a stop to it is by getting ourselves out of the illusion, out of the fog. And the only way we can do that is being conscious of it. So no matter what what mental level we're we're at or we're in we're thrown in so let me give you an example too so i started having the portals and i had i i through the daydream state i was able to access what i call glimpses what happens is when we go into a daydream state which is why you're awake there was i noticed when i was driving home i had an hour commute each way every day and i'm sitting in the car and i realized there's something in the daydream state there was something there, but I, I, I don't know what it was. So over and over and over for about a year, I kept trying and trying to figure out what was going on, what was happening, till I finally realized that subconsciously, I was I there was a portal experience within the daytime in that daydream state that I was having that I would just show up. There would be somebody talking to me, giving me information, and then it would come right back. And this could be like that. But you would hear a whole conversation. But I couldn't retain the information because what happens is we come back through the veil. It's like taking a hard drive through a magnetic field. It erases all the information. So I was finally able to bring back information from that. And I realized I had to take my consciousness where my subconsciousness was and then bring it back retaining information. We all do it on a daily basis. We just don't realize it. I was lucky, yes. enough, I was lucky enough to catch it. I caught it. And then I started studying it. So I pretty much figured out a way to do it every time. I was able to be successful. I have tons of records of them. Most of the information is not really super helpful, but it led me to certain conclusions. But one of them was, here we are. We're in that system and nobody knows it. Nobody remembers it. Why? Because they are in conscious control of it. When I brought my conscious there, when I was able to project it there and bring it back, then I was able to remember it. But it takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot of practice to do that. So if, if they can cover stuff up during our daily lives that we don't even know our subconscious is communicating with it, but our consciousness isn't aware of it, how many other things are there that they can do? If that's what happens after you pass away, you'll, you'll never even have a chance of saying no, you'll never have a chance. It's it's all about creating. It's about getting through the barriers and it's about exercising your ability to expand your consciousness and to project it and bring information back and to become conscious no matter what situation they may put you in. So let's so just hold this thing about mass hypnosis that it's just clear that's what we're going through, whether in the, this realm or the other. It's, it, we're all being, uh, not hypnosis, uh, what's the word I'm trying to say? Uh, amnesia, mass, mass amnesia is what it right. is. Yeah. So, but here's the thing, um, but somehow we have to uh, acquire enough uh, personal sovereignty and, 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 and totally thoroughly convinced uh, that we are not going to be, it's going to be total non-compliance at all levels. That's what right. it, but I, in order I, for I can't see, I can't see no way out. In order for you to um, apply that, you need to be in the right state, state of mind. And, and obviously, obviously, in order for us to be projected down into this low level vibrational field and insulated from our source, and insulated from a lot of areas. So we, we're in this. They wiped our memory. They wiped everything. 
and they're in control of the illusion. So imagine if they can wipe our memory and put us in these illusional fields, which I've been in many of them, and you and you can access your consciousness from from at those points, then you are in more control than you ever were. But if you can't even get control of those, there's no way you're ever going to be able to be able to get out of the recycling mode. Because when people say, yeah, I'll just say no and stuff, you won't even be aware of what's going on. You will not even understand the level of manipulation that this is that we are in. It's it's multi-level manipulation and it's far beyond what people could even understand. It's even hard for me to understand when I've been going through it for decades. This stuff is next level stuff and it's so hard to understand. And even when I go through it, I still struggle at times, even duplicating the methods I've used because what happens is when I duplicate my methodology, they, it, so I'm learning, it also learns as well. The system will create new blockages and new resistance. So I have to, as I go along, I have to create different avenues. So it's like you're on your path. The next thing you know, there's a roadblock, you know, there's a, there's a rock in the way. So you got to go walk around that. Yeah. So we're going against a system that is not only projecting this illusion and everything, it's also learning our avenues around it. Fortunately, with the portals, they're on a different level that I've been utilizing. So the portals are not necessarily going to be blocked because they're not, they weren't originally generated by me in the, in the beginning. Those were not generated by me. I just learned how to, how, how to um, duplicate them, to duplicate the connections. Okay, but so... So we're in, we're we're still in a big bind, bro. We're still well, we're, we're always going to be in this bind unless we get ourselves out of it. But the problem is, is first understanding. Okay, in order to really understand what I'm saying, you know, you need to understand the situation that we're really in at a certain point. Now, when I say multi level, you know, you have your psychological programming that's on the physical level. You have your emotional and all, all those different levels. And you have the astral level, which is the spirit level. So at night, what you've, what you've come to know during the day, that information is trying to get, they're trying to prune that out of you because on the subconscious level, your subconscious is actually working against your consciousness. And the reason why I came up with that whole idea in the whole, in the reality of it is as I realized my subconscious was having these connections and I brought my consciousness along. I found a way to do it. Then I'm like, why, why would my subconscious not allow me to access it? Why is that? And if you know, from a lot of, a lot of information you get from other people, you hear about the subconsciousness, you have your own experiences, you have your own dream experiences. And I've had enough to where I've documented all this and I can put it together and I can see, there's, there's a pattern. There's a pattern of us being the, the conscious part and the subconscious being part of the hive mind. So we're not, that's not an individual. That's a, a, a community, a commune, a communal uh, methodology. And we're, we're the actual individual. So we are the separation and the subconscious blocks your conscious mind because it does not want it to switch between your astral and your soul and that sort of thing. So it's a, it's, it's a very convoluted, uh, insulated, and really screwed up uh, system. But the more you learn about it, the more you realize there's, you don't know about it. So the more I learn, the more well, I realize. So I got the, the thing that's just happening is, uh, bro, is that... Uh, we're not giving people the answer they want to hear. We're not even giving the, the, uh, the, the answer that maybe you and I even want to hear. But this is the brutal truth. And in order to even to escape from this full spectrum dominance octagon of a prison uh, that we're in, we have to first accept that that's what we're in. And that there, the, the Roman Catholic Church didn't give us the, the answer. Uh, 
Um, Islam didn't give us the answer. Judaism didn't give us the answer. None of these, none of these isms have given us the answer to the escape the problem that we're in. And the, the challenge is so the challenge is I it seems to me the only way is to is to learn how somehow whatever it works, how it works, I don't I not claim I have the answer, but somehow we have to we have to acquire our our true uh, our sovereign selves, whatever that means. And I don't well we're already there. We already have ourselves, our consciousness is with us all the time. And, and we decide, you know, we decide, like I said, we decide if we're going to be in the game or not. We have to physically work at it. We have to mentally work at it. We have to emotionally and, and our work at it. And once we, you know, separate ourselves and then be in control of what everything that we think or that we feel so other people can't trigger us, then we get into the point where, okay, now that I have my, I have pretty much control of myself to a certain degree, then I become consciously aware of what's happening in my dreams because the dream state is eight to 10 hours or whatever, six to six to 10 hours of our lives. You don't want to throw that away by not being conscious in it because what happens is then you're, you're open to all this programming. And if you can't be in control of your dream state, then you'll never be in control of any other state that you're in because what will happen is they'll utilize that same state or a state similar to it when it comes down to it and you just won't be in charge. You have to be mentally aware and you have to be in mentally control 24 seven. That's the but, only way that you're going to be able to even scratch the surface to begin to scratch. The surface. What I so, found out is if I can access portals, then I can, I can, I can access whatever I need to. The problem is, is just, you need to find a way. And nothing's laid out for us. There's no instructions. There's nothing that's going to happen. So the only way that we're going to get to that point is just constantly, I, I try every day. I work on stuff every single day. I go through, I write things down that I that I, I figured out and, um, and to try to help myself and others. And then I put it to the test myself. That's the whole thing. And I understand, I don't, I don't dwell on the fact that, yeah, there's a, there's a big job ahead of us because I really don't care. At this point, my only, my only focus is finding a way through it. And that's what I do. I mean, that's my job. And, um, and I just go at it like 100%, 24-7 drive. And that's, what, that's exactly what I do every single day. I'm thinking about it. I'm working on it. I'm trying to find a way around it. And that's what I do. This is a spiritual ninja. So yeah, you talk about source. So then what is source to you? Because most people would say that's God. But it, I, I find that dangerous. This whole God is just dog in reverse. And what is right. a dog? What is a dog that's led by on a leash? Yeah, I don't I don't I don't put a name to it. I do know that we obviously came from somewhere, you know, in a spirit energy source. And um, you know, I to me, I don't really, I don't, I don't concern myself with a lot of the shiny objects and 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 uh, and things that that I could think about because I'm hyper focused on what what I'm focused on. I really don't, you know, right now I really don't care about a lot of the other stuff. I just I'm I'm working on one thing, and um, and I've gotten good at a lot of things, but but that doesn't put me in, you know, that doesn't get me where I want to go. They're tools that I can utilize, but until until I have the answer or the um, or a, a methodology that we can utilize, then I'm not going to be I'm not going to be happy with it, you know. And that's just that's for me. That's that's what I focus on. I really don't focus on a lot of other stuff because I've seen a lot of stuff. I've seen a lot of beings from other places. They manipulate things in order to make you feel, uh, you know, acceptable to them and. And that sort of thing. So all the beings that I've met throughout the decades and, and met with and listened to, I could, there's no information even worth really passing on to because it's just general information. It's like if they were to come out and say, hey, hey, we'll help you find these missing children. You got 460,000 missing children in the United States every year. Let's help you do that. Or let's help you with free energy and stuff. No, 
None of them are, none of them are focused on helping, wanting to help us. Not one of them. Not one of them in 30 years really said, hey, let's uh, let's go do this or let's go do that or this, you know, this is going to help everybody out. Not going to happen. You know, don't. So all the angels or or whatever you call them, you know, the archons or whatever or whoever, none of them are there to help us because it's it's all, you know, a devil and an angel could be the same being just depending on what they want you to see at the time. You know, they're all the same, you know, beings in the astral. They're just they're just, you know, portraying what you want to see or what's going to benefit their relationship with you at the time. They're there to manipulate us. Like I said, you know, you were in the in the prison, you go in the astral, it's the prison yard. They're just there as another level of manipulation. They call them the uh, uh, their damage control. That way, you know, if you get away from Earth, you're not going to you're not going to learn anything because they're going to be in control of what you know they tell you. It's like a lot of the psychics that are out there. They say, oh, "I have my spirit guide." Well, what's your spirit guide done to help anybody? I can guarantee it. The answer is not a damn thing. They're going to tell you about all the drama. They're going to tell you about what grandma ate for freaking breakfast yesterday. Whatever. But they're not going to help you because they're not there to help. They're there to keep you in line, to keep you following the agenda.